welcome to this week's episode of the Big Round Show with me, Chris Cadrum. Okay, as per usual, again, a big thank you to everybody that watched that last week's episode of the show and commented. Um, I think, by and large, it, was a, it seemed to go down pretty well. Um, and, yeah, I thought it was a, a pretty interesting episode. Um, but then all the episodes of the show are interesting, aren't they, really? Well, I like to think so, anyway. Um, obviously, some get more views than others, but, yeah, well, that's, that's kind of the way of things, isn't it? Anyway, so... On to this week's episode of the show. I thought it was about time to do some Irish whiskey again, and specifically blended Irish whiskey. And um, I, I rummaged around in the box of samples for um, uh, last year's World Whiskey Awards, and um, uh, because I tasted blended Irish in, in the first round. And um, these are not all from that. I mean, there were a couple of bottlings from Tullamore Dew. Uh, which I haven't included in today's tasting because I've kind of set them aside for a, a future episode of the show. Um, so basically what I've got is five samples from uh, the World Whiskey Awards and one which I got sent uh, a fair old time ago. Um, actually 2017, would you believe it? You know, the uh, the fecking Irish whiskey, um, which incidentally is the title for this week's episode of the show. God, I'm getting really good at this, this naming episodes of the show before I actually film them. So yeah, today's episode of the show is called Fecking Irish Whiskey. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, I'm sure that might upset a few people, you know, and, and, and it's kind of, I suppose, one of the reasons why um, I didn't kind of uh, decide to stock it at the time. Um, you know, I, w I mean, to me, it's funny. You know, it is, it's a bit of a laugh, it's humorous, but I'm sure there are some people that probably just take get, get offended by it, take it in the wrong way, and, you know, um, it, it, that was... Yeah, it wasn't the the whole reason for not not going ahead and, and putting it on the shelf, you know. But that was part of the reason. And you know, these things you as a retailer you kind of have to um, take into consideration. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, Irish whiskey. Really, I, I I love Irish whiskey, and and I found out uh, a few days ago that uh, uh, the first. Uh, whiskey is being bottled by by the Waterford distillery and I'm really looking forward to trying that I mean um, I hope uh, I'm some samples will be forthcoming in due course um, certainly um, uh, Mark has promised me some samples and I've got two samples left over from uh, new make that uh, he showed me sort of some some time ago oh, that's probably about a year or two ago now um, and again I've had them set aside waiting for the opportunity to sort of do something with them and that's that's often the issue that I have with with um, receiving samples is that I want to use them in episodes of the show but it's trying to find how to use them if you see what I mean so sometimes they end up sitting aside for quite some period of time until I've either got enough from one particular distillery or you know a theme shall we say to to warrant actually doing an episode of the show and um because a lot of these distilleries and brands and what have you i don't actually have direct dealings with and and um that's pretty much it for the for today's lineup so all of them were kind of uh, should we say new to me uh when uh, when i tasted them the first time around so um i'm not going to go into too much sort of detail now I'll obviously talk about each of the individual samples when when I introduce them but uh, um, like I said they're all all blends and um, yeah I think uh, I think it's about time to, to do a, another Irish episode of the show so uh, anyway um, uh, without further ado let's have a look at the range right okay so with a fairly diverse array of, of, of samples I thought the easiest way of doing it is we'll do it in ABV so we're starting with the 40% bottling which is the fecking Irish whiskey I mean yeah um, anyway <laughs> name aside um, this is a blend of, of, of various Irish whiskies um, I'm, I'm assuming um, it's a blended malt. Uh, I probably should have looked it up before I started. All the, I know all the rest are, are blends, i.e. a blend of malt and grain, but I, I didn't look this one up. <gasps> oh, anyway, so I, I, I believe um, it was produced by the... Now, here we go. Because we're doing an Irish episode of the show, lots of Irish words, which I'm going to absolutely mangle. So if you are 
in Ireland and you are watching this, uh, I do apologise for um, mispronouncing uh, these names. So, um, I believe it's, <laughs> it's produced at the uh, Eschneville Distillery and it's a blend of their spirit and Cooley. So, um, 40%, you know, we'll see, there's a good good starting point. Now, the second bottling we'll be looking at, just checking that, yes, it is indeed the Slain Irish Whiskey. Uh, again, bottled at 40%. Um, this is a, a brand owned by Brown Foreman, and it, this particular bottling was the second release in what they call their Slain Castle Whiskey brand. Um, oh, lovely marketing guff, here we go. It's triple casked whiskey. Oh dear God! Um, I mean, all right, yes, all right. It is <laughs> been aged in three different types of casks, so yes, you could call it triple cask whiskey. But you know, it's a bit meaningless, really, that term. Um, anyway, it's apparently been aged uh, in um, a variety of virgin American oak, seasoned bourbon cask. Why didn't you just say ex bourbon casks? You know. Anyway, um, and ex Oloroso sherry. So. Um, yeah, it's fairly darkish in colour, probably a, a fair degree of Oloroso in that. Can't remember what it retails for, but anyway, so that is bottling number two. Bottling number three that we'll be looking at is the Wild Geese Limited Edition 4th Centennial. Bottle of 43%. God, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Um, so this is a blend of double distilled malt and grain, again from Cooley, um, and it's bottled for the uh, the Avalon Group. Now, um, again, whenever I seem to do Irish whiskey, we always have the conversation about sourced uh, uh, spirit, etc., um, etc. Et but I think Avalon have certainly been going for a number of years. I mean, I certainly remember tasting an early bottling of the, um, the Wild Geese. Ooh early 2000s I, I would imagine so so it's pr a quite an established blend, uh, brand as far as uh, as far as I'm aware um, bottling at uh, number four is uh, called the Whistler uh, Irish Whiskey Oloroso finish at 43% uh, now this is produced by a, a, a distillery called the Boan Distillery um, apologies again if I've just murdered that word um, so it's, it's sourced spirit. I don't believe the distillery has actually been built, or if it has been, it's not in production yet. I, again, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so it's triple distilled malt with grain, separately matured in ex bourbon, and finished for nine months in ex oloroso. So again, um, judicious use of cherry could be interesting. Hopefully, it won't blanket the spirit completely. So um, could be interesting. Uh, the penultimate bottling is called uh, the Rowe and Co Blended Whiskey Bottle at 45%. Now, this is a brand owned by Diageo. Um, now, um, back in 2014, Diageo decided to offload uh, Bushmills, um, their one and only Irish distillery, and they, they effectively swapped it with um, a Mexican company called Casa Cuervo for the final 50% of the Don Julio tequila range. Well, yeah, I know that tequila is, is becoming big, but I mean, back then, I didn't think it was quite such a sort of a big deal. I mean, um, you know, it was all bloody gins at the time, um, shall we say. Um, and allegedly, this was, it was just purely um, money. Uh, according to what I read, uh, in 2013, Bushmills made Diageo somewhere in the region of £57 million, which is not a, a shabby amount, uh, but sales of Don, tequila, uh, Don Julio tequila were £105 million. So, yeah, I suppose seems like a, a logical bit of business, I guess, but, you know, would you want to swap, you know, a, a distillery like Bushmills, you know, allegedly, I think, one of the oldest, if not the oldest Irish whiskey distillery for tequila brand anyway um, so basically Diageo are now back in the Irish whiskey business and uh, I'm guessing that this is probably Bushmills I mean you would have uh, thought um, that when you are selling a distillery like Bushmills you're probably going to have a clause in it to say that you know we can buy some stock from you or that kind of thing certainly it wouldn't be unprecedented shall we say so anyway this is the that's the Rowan Co 
and the last bottling we'll be looking at is called the legendary silky Irish whiskey bottled at 46 percent now this is again sourced spirit uh, from um, ooh, now this is a Celtic name the name of this distillery which I'm sure I'm going to get wrong uh, Silab um, just <laughs> Silab Layag. Oh God, that doesn't sound right at all. But anyway, um, that's <laughs> that's as best I can do with the name of that distillery. So uh, it's apparently um, a, a blend of double distilled, triple distilled, peated malt and grain whiskey. Um, I don't know the source. It doesn't say. Uh, certainly, I couldn't find the source of the, uh, the spirits. But it's going to be well, one of the usual two or three, isn't it? Really. Um, now again, I don't know anything about the the, the distillery itself, um, but apparently um, the silky uh, were or the mythology around silkies were they were called the seal people in the mythology. I believe uh, not only pertained to sort of Ireland, but also the north and west coast of Scotland and the Orkneys. And allegedly, in the Orkneys, they they were believed to be the souls of the drowned, uh, who were uh, apparently allowed once one, one night a year they were allowed to sort of reassume uh, human form and uh, visit wherever they used to live that kind of thing so uh, um, yeah okay but well, I mean I've got no issue with, with plundering mythology for your brand names I mean you know, look at Island Park for God's sake you know they, they, they incessantly do it so um, <laughs> But there you go. Anyway, so but the thing, as we well know, um, packaging, frippery, mythology, all that is completely inconsequential in reality because it's the juice in the bottle that counts. And so, let's make a start on tasting said juice. Right. Okay. So let's uh, kick off with a bit of pecking Irish whiskey, then, shall we? <laughs> all right. Okay. Yeah. That's enough of that. Anyway, nose. It's Irish whiskey. It's it's pleasantly honeyed. It's soft. Um, there's a little bit of esteriness, a bit of banana, toffee. There's a there's a nip to it, which would seem to imply there's maybe some grain spirit in there. Or if it's if it's not grain spirit, it's certainly going to be young uh, young malt. Um, I mean, it's it's pleasant. I mean, there's no off notes, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I don't think it retails for a huge amount of money. Um, and you could argue it is pretty much a textbook Irish whiskey. A um, little, little bit of coffee possibly coming through from the oak now. A little bit of vanilla. Hmm. Pleasant enough, that has to be said. Let's see what the pulse like. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of grain now on the palate. That sort of nippy, slightly dried fruit graininess. It's a little bit of malt underneath it. Um, it's quite soft. There's some, some pleasant honeyed notes. A bit of banana, a bit of apricot. Um, it's pretty simple stuff. It's a bit short. There's no real length to it. Um, there's a little bit of vanilla and a little bit of spice on the finish. I mean, it, it's perfectly acceptable whiskey in my opinion. Um, it's not going to set your heart racing or your pants on fire, you know, but, you know, it's perfectly acceptable. Right, okay, so let's move on to the second one. This is the Slane Irish Whiskey. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end. Well, I can't get any spirit. I'm just getting a, an absolute nose full of oak. Um, I'm getting lots of vanilla, lots of toasty oak, charred oak, a little bit of, of um, spicy sherry. Um, I, it's it's just sort of just oak. Um, I, I mean, and frankly, it's it's quite dull, really. I mean, it's again quality-wise, nothing wrong with it. No off notes, uh, no mustiness or fustiness. I mean, you wouldn't expect that from Diageo. 
uh, oh, sorry, Brown Foreman. Um, but really, you wouldn't have known this is an Irish whiskey. I mean, there's no discernible spirit character. Like I said, it is pretty much all oak. Um, I'm even getting a, a sort of a, a rye-like sort of feel coming through as well. Um, see what that's like. Again, a lot of oak kicks off with that, with the bourbon and the, the sort of virgin oak vanillins, a um, little bit of tannin. All right, mid palate, yes, a little bit more spirit character, a little bit of, of that kind of soft um, apricot and sort of, of slightly estuary fruit, and then the, the sherry coming through on the finish. Um, it's a bit short, there's a little bit of bitterness in the finish, Not nothing to get really bent out of shape about, a bit of toffee, but again, you know, it's really quite dull. Um, I mean, you know, it's a pleasant whiskey, but again, I wouldn't have picked it as an Irish whiskey. It, you know, uh, the only sort of, because I know, I suppose it's because I know it's an Irish whiskey, I'm kind of searching for the Irish whiskey character, which does sort of come through on the middle, but it's all brief before the oak, before the sherry kind of comes wading in, you know, and, and frankly, uh, you know, as a, as a product, as a whiskey, it's perfectly acceptable. It's like I said, it's, it's, um, absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's frankly really quite dull at the end of the day. Okay. So let's move on to the wild geese. So, uh, 43% and um, yeah, so uh, double distilled molten grain from Cooley. Let's see what those give us. Uh, that's a bit of an interesting nose. Um, there's a slight Rieslingy, petroly note. Um, and I, I remember when I when I sort of tasted this blind for the World Whiskey Awards, that was certainly a, a note that I put down that I thought this actually might be some kind of funky Riesling wine finish, but um, obviously not. Um, it's, I mean, it's got, got, got character, it's got complexity, it's got sort of barley, macerated apricot, tangerine, touch of orange, and it's got that it's, it just has that late harvested honey note and it just smells like it's been finished in a, a Riesling cask or casks I should say it is unusual um, intriguing um, I mean I like I love Riesling and, and I love whiskies that have been finished in Riesling I mean you know I, you probably remember the um, uh, Morrison Mackay the strictly limited uh, Feta Ken that was finished in Riesling I mean Wow, you know, um, and how many times are you going to get me to say wow about a fair can? Um, but yeah, so interesting, really interesting nose, it has to be said. See what that's like. Again, soft. Feels like it has some maturity at work there. There's a sort of macerated, mature-ish kind of fruit. Again, there's that Riesling is petroly kind of note, honey. And then that whininess just kind of lingers right through to the finish. I mean, it's not the world's longest finish. Um, it does kind of finish a little bit austere. Um, I mean, you can argue there's a bit of minerality on the finish um, and just a, a, a smidgen of spice. Um, yeah, it's it's an odd one. It has to be said. I, I I quite like it in actual fact. I mean, it's it's different. Um, if it hasn't had any finishing in Riesling cast, where in God's name did that sort of petroly kind of note come from? Um, possibly faints, I, but it doesn't feel fainty, and it feels like it's there's it's a, 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 a an interesting blend of uh, of, of younger and, uh, and more mature spirits. Um, again, I don't know what it retails for. Um, but yeah, you know what? I I quite like that in a weird way. Right, 
Okay, so let's move on to the Whistler. So from the uh, Boan Distillery. Um, so uh, triple distilled malt and grain, and then uh, batted together and finished in Oloroso. Let's see what those goes. You know, it's a bit shy. Um, and there's again, there's that slight petroly kind of note. Not quite so as obvious as the um, the previous bottling. Um, it's got some pleasant fruit. There's a, a pleasant amount of, of, of sherry notes, some dried fruit, a little bit of prune. Um, there's some barley. I mean, again, it's it's not a bad nose. It is intriguing. I think that the balance between um, the American oak and the sherry is, is pretty good. Um, it's got um, it's got more of a malt character on the nose. I'm not getting a huge amount from the grain, so it would seem to imply that this has a fairly high malt content. Um, yeah. See what the pants are. Again, soft, oily, opens up with the American oak, um, a bit of barley. Again, that slight petroly note moves into the sherry towards the towards the finish. Pleasant finish, mouth watering, but not overly mouth watering. I mean, it's only forty-three percent, but it's it's juicy. It's got a nice succulent finish to it. Um, it's a bit more grain on the palate, um, and then that often seems to be the way with blended whiskies that they that when you when you sort of smell them, they seem to sort of say, "Oh, look, lots and lots of malt," and then when you taste them you realise that in actual fact it's not quite so heavily uh, or that the malt content isn't quite so as, as, as big as you might actually think and although this has got a, a good amount of malt or appears to have a good amount of malt there's certainly a lot more grain on, on the palate and, it, and the thing is with, with some blends is that, that the grain often seems to come through on the end and it does sometimes make the finish feel a little Austere, although in saying that it had a lovely juiciness as well. So I think you know on on the balance of things, it's actually not it's not bad at all. In actual fact, I think it's a, I think it's quite a pleasant blend. I right. Okay. So let's move on to the Rowan Co. So uh, bottled at um, forty five percent. Let's let's see what uh, what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Well, it certainly says Bushmills to me. I mean, it's got that crisp, intense Bushmills kind of character. Lithe, spicy, almost salty, nippy, grainy. But certainly feels like... It's got some nice oak. I mean, it's matured in a combination of refill and first fill American oak. It's certainly got that kind of um, pleasant oakiness to it but not an overt oakiness um the, i mean the oak does feel a touch on the chunky side there's a touch of toffee um but i think the balance is really quite pleasant it's got that balance between the chunkiness of the oak and the live crispness of, of of both the malt and the grain um yeah i like that it's that, that's impressive i mean you know that is a good that's a good whiskey it has to be said um yeah, you know, Diageo have obviously got hold of got hold of some good bushmills to for, for this particular bottling. It has to be said. Um, so the pass line. Again, it's a classic blend. Opens up with the malt. The vanilla, a little bit of toffee, a little bit of chocolate, grain starts to come through on the mid palate and throughout the finish. Um, again, it's got quite a juicy finish. Um, and, uh, you know, nice balance of that slightly austere 
um, grain and, and juicy malt. Um, the, probably the grain is a little bit, again, a little bit more prevalent on the palate, but you know, it's again, it's a pleasant blend. I think the nose is kind of slightly more interesting than the palate, um, but again, it's not a bad whiskey. It's certainly, you know, one that you could quite happily enjoy. Again, like all of these, none of them are kind of like really sort of, you know, setting one's pants on fire, but they're not bad whiskies at all. And I'm guessing that, I mean, like I said, I didn't look up what these are retailing for, but I imagine they're not going to be particularly expensive. Maybe the um, the wild geese bottling is probably going to be the most expensive bottling in the range, or in this, this range, I should say. Um, so, you know, value for money, I guess you just really can't argue with it. Right, and finally we're on to the legendary Silky. Let's see what the nose gives us on this. Mmm. God, that is, that's quite fainty. It's oily. It's young. Um, it's quite a lot of green banana, green estuary fruit, apple skin, a little bit of faints, a little bit of dare I say a little bit of cardboard um, it's now if if one was being generous one would say it's got that lovely kind of fresh appley green fruit crispness um, there's a little bit of earth there's a little bit of chocolatiness but there's that little bit of cardboard um, and it's just kind of like mmm I think one or two rogue casks got in on this mix, I think. Um, it's not... And, it's, and I, I will give it, it's, it there's just a, it's just a smidge, you know. It's not like it's overtly fainty. Um, it's just that edge there. I mean, maybe that's what they were aiming for. Maybe they wanted that slight edginess. Maybe they wanted sort of like a bit of wet seal to come through. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm probably being a little bit hard on it, I, I guess. But, you know, it's... It, it, it just, it's like kind of like running your nails down a, a blackboard, you know. it's For some people, that really grates on them. And, there's that, and that sort of slight faintiness... Um, just, just kind of detracts, you know, it just, um, but aside from that, if you'd have just got rid of that, you know, it would have been a really quite sort of, you know, not overly complex, but, you know, pleasant, pleasant nose. Let's see what the part's like. Young, fainty, short. I wouldn't quite say, well, it is. It's a bit boring, really, to be bluntly honest with you. When you think about what the component parts are, you've got double distilled malt, triple distilled malt, peated malt, grain. And really, it doesn't... It, it's not greater than the sum of its parts. It's young, it's oily, there's not a huge amount of complexity. There's a little bit of earthiness, there's possibly a little bit of almost chocolate malt kind of character. Um, but essentially it is pretty young uh, uh, and characterless, it has to be said. You know, it's just... It, I, I get the feeling it could have been, you know, an awful lot better than it actually is. And... Although it's not a dreadful whiskey, and it probably isn't particularly expensive, uh, even so, it's just kind of like you taste it and you just go, hmm, okay, hmm. And, you know, there's, there, there's nothing exciting about it whatsoever. Um, yeah, I, I'm probably being overly critical of it, but in the reality, in, 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 in within this lineup, you know, um, it surely it shows up the sort of like it's the limitations and um i mean i gave it what did i give it a 6.7 apparently you know and when you think about seven out of ten would be considered what you would say is an average whiskey um you know yeah okay 
So let's sum today's episode of the show up. Well, um, fecking Irish whiskey. Well, it does what it says on the tin. It tastes like an Irish whiskey. It's not not the most complex of, uh, of whiskies on the face of the planet, but it's pleasant and it has pretty much what you would expect and want from an Irish whiskey. I mean, it's certainly certainly not too bad at all. Um, the slain, um, it's just kind of. It's just an oak fest at the end of the day. You know, the whiskey could have practically come from anywhere on the face of the planet in reality, um, uh, because the oak was the, the pretty much all it tasted of, really, at the end of the day. So, although the quality of of, of the bottling wasn't bad, uh, it, it's frankly quite dull. Um, the the wild geese. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's probably the, the standout bottling of, of the day in reality. Um, it's a bit weird, maybe. It's like I said, it comes across like it's been finished in an ex Riesling cask. But, you know, it's it's interesting, you know. And what, what more can you ask for? Um, the, um, the Whistler, um, yeah, okay, again, yeah, not a bad whiskey, you know. Good sort of like judicious use of Oloroso, um, which I like to see, it has to be said. So it's not a sherry monster. It's got some complexity. Again, that slight sort of Rieslingy kind of note, which is you know, obviously something to do with the, the, the coolie that they uh, they used. Um, so again, not a particularly bad whiskey. Um, the the Rowan Co. Um, Again, you know, um, pleasant, um, not exactly earth-shattering, um, probably like a lot, like a lot of these blends, you know, heavier on the, on the grain than the malt. Um, it's all about sort of price point, as you well know, when it comes to gr to, to blended whiskies. But you know, again, you know, it's not not bad. It's not, yeah, it's not bad. Um, and uh, the finally the silky. Um, I just think that was just cask selection. Personally, I think they've they've, they've used the spirit they've used is too young. Um, I mean that is pretty much obvious from from tasting it. And um, when you're using all these different components, different you know double distilled, triple distilled, etc., etc. You know it's it's got to say something. It's got to be greater than the individual components. And and frankly, it wasn't. Uh, it was another fairly dull whiskey at the end of the day, and um, I, you, like I said, you might you may well think I'm being unduly harsh on it, but really, you know, there was so much whiskey about um, that you know, uh, if you're going to stand out, you've got to do something really interesting, really intriguing, and and frankly, that is is eminently forgettable at the end of the day, which is. Um, which is the way it is at the end of the day. So, uh, like I said, I don't, you know, I don't denigrate anybody's um, anybody's products and things like that. But, but frankly, you know, you you've really got to step up to the plate if you're going to sort of stick something on the market, and you've got to sort of accept the fact that you know um, you're going to get reviewed and some people are going to love it some people are not going to love it so much so it's uh, all the fun of whiskey tasting at the end of the day so um so yeah really intriguing episode of the show i think you know uh, some stuff that like i said that uh, you know is fairly new to me i hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of the show um all it's basically left to say as per usual is good afternoon or, or no good morning <laughs> oh 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 whiskey before lunch. Um, good morning and good drumming.